Everyone. Yeah. I'm going to read out a bit of it that uh, was written down. Now, I'm not familiar with this website. Um, I don't know any of their ideology or anything like that. And I've just come across this on a link to the British Muslims for Sake of a Democracy. And the admin posted this. He, he was shocked. Um, and uh, this is how the report goes. BLM leader says white subhuman should be wiped out. That's a headline. Just go read out a bit of this. One of the founders of Black Lives Matter in Toronto says white people are genetic defects and should be wiped out. User Kogali has posted to controversial calls on her Facebook page, including one that says whites are subhuman. Whiteness is not humgeness, whatever that means. In fact, white skin is subfunction, she wrote. All phonetic types exist within the black family and white people are a genetic defect of blackness. Kigali has garnered news coverage after BLM Toronto disrupted the Toronto Pride Parade and engaged in heated confrontations with Ontario Premier Catherine Wynne. A year ago, she said, please, Allah, give me the strength to not cast kill these white men, these men and white folks out here today. Kigali says white people are inferior because they have a higher concentration of enzyme inhibitors that suppress melanin production. They're genetically deficient because melanin is present at the inception of life. She then muses about wiping out the white race. Black people simply through the dominant genes can literally wipe out the white race if we had the power to. Do you ever wonder how many black people after centuries of colonial violence, what she calls out this in, genocide and destruction, no matter what systems created to make us extinct, how do we keep coming back? It's because we are super humans, she added. Look at us, we have our numbers, she said. Um, her claims didn't impress one of America's leading scholars in the history of eugenics. The document mirrors the races of American eugenicists who claimed in the first third of the 20th century the native whites were genetically superior not only to blacks but also to immigrants from Eastern and Southern Europe. That's exactly what I was thinking. Daniel Kevlis, a professor at Yale University, wrote to the Toronto Sun. Their claims were without any scientific foundation and had ad added up to the expressions of naked white racism. Well, really, this is, this is not reverse racism. This is racism, pure and simple. Um, the problem of reverse racism is it's, it, it kind of, it's trivialised, like, if a white person takes issue with the racism of a black person, as this is the case, it's seen as, oh, well, the white people had no right to complain after all they done. There's so many flaws in her argument. I'm not even going to humour the pseudoscience that she's coming out with. Um, the uh, the professor is absolutely right. I mean, this absolutely mirrors the warped notion of white supremacists at the beginning of the 20th century. It reminds me of the scene in um, Django Unchained with Leonardo DiCaprio's character, who's a vicious, very unpleasant character, um, starts preaching about uh, so-called dimples in the black skull that make black people superior to white people. Well, basically, she's going down the same path. And one thing I detest about black racists is the whataboutery that they always come out with. Your people done this, so that excuses me being a piece of shit. It's bullshit. She's saying, um, how do you explain so many black people? Well, firstly, black people are not dominant in terms of numbers. That would be Asian. In fact, the world's most common ethnic group is most likely Han Chinese, uh, if not South Asian. Um, black people and white people are probably around the same numbers, dispersed, um, dispersed roughly, if you get uh, as a whole, equally between North, South America, Europe and Africa. Um, you know, but regardless of what the exact numbers are, that really is beside the point. This is vicious, bare, naked racism. And this woman is obviously a hate-filled extremist. Um, and I really hope that there is some action taken against her, whether it be police interviews over her threats for violence, because that's what they are. People will say, what about free speech? I, I will defend free speech so long as actions are not implied. I also believe that with free speech comes responsibility. So she absolutely deserves the scrutiny that she's getting. I looked at her Facebook page and um, it is actually interesting. There are people who had supported BLM who are now starting to wake up and understand just how ugly this organisation is. Here's the thing. When Black Lives Matter started about three years ago, 
I actually had some sympathies because at that time the perceived cause was the sort of incidents of police brutality that were going on. And there were some things that were excusable. The way Eric Garner was treated, for instance. Although I do believe each case needs to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, one mistake I think the right has made is always rushing to the defence of police no matter what. There are some circumstances that are absolutely inexcusable. But since that time, how has Black Lives Matter presented itself? It has engaged in completely divisive protests, putting thousands of commuters, including black commuters, through a great deal of stress, showing that their actions are selfish. They don't really care about public opinion. They have chanted violence against all police officers, okay, ostensibly against white police officers, but don't forget there's black police officers as well, so they're advocating violence against all law enforcement officers, whether they think they're just picking on white people or not. Um, they've done absolutely nothing to stand up to the gang culture that plagues cities like Chicago. 752 homicides last year, mostly black on black violence. This is an organisation that absolutely reeks of hypocrisy, that reeks of division, and it reeks of hate. And the most cowardly thing that Black Lives Matter does is constantly come about with this what about you? So you whites done this in the past, that justifies our mentality today. I take the view that all free thinking adults are entirely responsible for their own logic. So the fact that there was incidents of horrible incidents of black people being lynched in the past does not excuse black supremacists today calling for white genocide. One very important fact that they ignore, by demonising the entire white race and saying they're all one and the same, they are insulting. They are insulting white civil rights activists who in some cases paid with their lives. And the more I think about it, the more ugly this organisation comes across. Now, they always come out with excuses. So how do you know this was Black Lives Matter? Well, she is a she is a founder. You know, we're not talking about someone who's just randomly called themselves a member. This is one of the founders in the Toronto branch. So if the other branches don't denounce her, as far as I'm concerned, they can go to hell. If they don't forcefully denounce her and say, she isn't what we represent, then they are going to commit suicide, metaphorically speaking. They are their own worst enemy and they don't even see it. I would put it to Black Lives Matter supporters. What has this organisation actually achieved, apart from getting some editorials in Time magazine and apart from getting a lot of negative attention, what have they actually achieved in their stated goals? I really don't see a great deal. I think all they have done is contributed to the divisions in North America. Um, like I say, this is the Canadian branch, so clearly this is spreading into Canada now. And there was um, some indication of spreading into the UK as well. As far as I'm concerned, this group should be proscribed as a hate group, because that's what they are. And the caveat, oh, but there's white people and Black Lives Matter. What I would say is white, useful idiots. I think they're probably decent people who believe that they're doing the right thing by associating themselves with this group, um, but they're really useful idiots because the Black Lives Matter founders, such as this woman, see them as inferior. It's a bit like in the 60s when the Nation of Islam and the Black Panthers came about. Um, they, they didn't actually want white help. So white people who support Black Lives Matter, I think they're just being incredibly naive. Um, I mean, attacking the police, vandalising property, burning buildings, will do absolutely nothing. Nothing. And I'm so sick and tired of the attitude that the regressive left come out with to try and make excuses for this. I would like to see what excuses people come out with. I posted this on my Facebook timeline, and I have a lot of people from my contact list. And there are a few people I sort of have question marks about because I think they may be sympathetic to this group. And it'll be interesting to see how they respond to my post. And then I'll be kicking them off my friend list because I don't want to be associated with people who... The, the reason I'm not doing it now is because I'm playing the devil's advocate. They might actually agree with me. I don't know. But this is a hate group. 
it is absolutely no better than the KKK because they're demonizing all white people and they, they won't take any responsibility for it. Um, you know, when that gang tortured the young white lad in Chicago, immediately Black Lives Matter uh, tried to distance themselves from it. They said, oh, well, there's no evidence those people were BLM candidates. But when you get, not candidates, um, activists, but when you get someone who is a founding member, is it any wonder that certain black thugs then take it on themselves to behave that way? So it's about time the organisers of this organisation start taking some responsibility. And if they don't, then they only prove that this is an extreme organisation by its very nature. I take the view that any campaign, any campaign that starts going against the public, that starts using divisive, counterproductive methods, will end up failing. This is common sense. This does not mean that I am turning a blind eye to issues that the black community are concerned about, issues like police brutality. And that is a real problem. I think it is definitely something. I think the right are too quick sometimes to defend the police because there are things that are inexcusable. It is inexcusable, for instance, if a police officer um, kills a suspect and in some cases unarmed suspects, that officer is then put on desk duty. They should be arrested the way a regular citizen would be arrested. So definitely that needs to be addressed. But Black Lives Matter have done nothing to help this problem. Nothing. I would argue they have just helped to create more division. I don't think Trump's side has helped either. Um, President Trump has shown absolutely no sense whatsoever that he's even prepared to listen to these concerns. And the problem is, for people who are undecided, they're going to go to the side they feel is less extreme. Um, so, you know, you people can say what they want about Obama, but I think he tried his level best to facilitate both sides of the argument. He was a left-wing figure, but, you know, the idea Obama was anti-police, I think, was a lot of nonsense. Um, and I certainly don't think he... Uh, could, could he have condemned BLM a bit more? I think he probably could, yeah. But I think it's unfair to say that Obama was an apologist for Black Lives Matter. I don't think he was. Um, okay, I'll leave it there. One last point. With all the news that's going around about fake news, I decided to play the devil's advocate. I thought, okay, well, I'm not that familiar with this website. It could be that this is made up. But so far, she hasn't denied it. Now, if you're accused of something like racism, you would be pretty fast to defend yourself if it wasn't the case. I've also looked at other sources, um, and this seems to be testified in numerous other sources. International Business Times, The Daily Caller, The Heat Street, um, The Toronto Sun, they all say the same thing about this, this woman, and uh, I think she needs to be held to account. She should be marginalised, she shouldn't be given airtime, and she should be treated as the extremist that she is.